What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and it's time for a narrated Wi-Fi battle video. Now, today's match is a battle that I had against Leo, one of my rivals from Twitter. Be sure to go check him out on Twitter if you'd like to battle him. You can see that we have some interesting teams here. I was testing out Assault Vest Bisharp, because uh, I was thinking of using it in the friendly. We also have Bandit Talonflame. I've really stayed away from using Talonflame, generally just because everyone else was using it and it was kind of right but I was playing around with the EVs now and Talonflame has fallen off in usage so I wanted to give it a shot there. Also thinking about using that in the friendly. Uh, annoying things on his side of the field are definitely going to be that slow bro and of course he has his own Talonflame since I'm running a banded one adamant nature. Going to need to be on the lookout for a jolly nature or something else running more speed. Now I did want to use Kafka Grigus. Uh, I make a misplay just to start off at the beginning of the battle here. I didn't think that he would want to stay in against Kafa Grigus. I could have burned him right there, but I thought that, that was too obvious, so I went for Call Mine, and he toxicked me. I also uh, put the wrong item on Kafa Grigus. I put uh, leftovers on it when I meant to put Chestoberry on it. So I'm off on a kind of a bad start here. Now, thinking that he might want to continue to stay in here and try to stall me, I decided to go for the Shadow Ball now, but of course he predicts that and goes into Porygon Z, whom I cannot touch. Uh, I was tempted to go for burn on the Porygon Z, which we'll find out later that I also should have done, especially since I have plus one special offense right there, because I didn't know what it was going to do. Porygon Z goes for Shadow Ball, and we can see that this does actually a pretty good amount of damage to Bisharp. Uh, if, if nothing else there, that's that damage may have been indicative of specs. He switched out though, so I figured he was Scarf. Uh, if he, he, I figured he was choiced in some way, because he could have stayed in and Hit me with a Thunderbolt or something. Uh, I just decided to switch out here. I really expected him to go for a U-turn with Thanksgiving, which is actually the Talonflame my bread for him. But he just goes straight for Brave Bird. And unfortunately, I that just kind of destroys my Noivern, which sucks because I would have liked to keep around my Specs of Noivern a little bit longer. But, you know, you, you do what you're going to do there. Uh, I am able to take out his Talonflame, so that's pretty nice. Now I was afraid of Pursuit here, but I was more afraid of Bullet Punch than Pursuit. So I decided to switch out into Kafagrigus. Kafagrigus basically walls Caesar, even if it's carrying a dark type move. After it touches me, it will lose its technician ability because its ability will change to Mummy. Uh, that not only lowers his overall damage potential, but that means he'll be doing less and less damage to me overall. So, well, I just said the same thing twice. You might be able to tell that I'm a little tired, but tiredness doesn't matter. Darn it, I'm not using rest. We're here bringing the energy into this battle. I was really expecting him to switch out here. I was pretty comfortable going for Will-O-Wisp since he no longer has a fire type on his team. And he leads into Caesar. So I didn't know. I In the back of my head at the time, I was thinking maybe he has a heal, bell, or aromatherapy. But no, he just lets his Caesar get burned, which I thought was a little interesting. It doesn't end up mattering too much, though. It does allow my Kafagrigus to get its health back, basically, because we do see my Kafagrigus getting whittled down more and more. Gonna go for the rest here. Would have really helped out to have that Chesto Berry right there. But what can you do, really? Uh, I'm able to get rid of the Toxic and get my health back. And he is just going to be stuck in here going for Thief attacks that aren't doing very much. Now he goes back on into Porygon Z here, probably just to go for Shadow Ball one more time. Uh, I... I didn't really want to get hit by a Shadow Ball, but at the same time, I figured that he might predict me to switch on into Bisharp again, so I just stayed in, trying to burn off some turns of sleep. He goes for Thunderbolt, and that damage confirms that he is definitely Scarfed, uh, just because if he respects, he would have done more damage. Um, not, not. He would have done more than I expected him to do, rather. I, I, I don't mean to state the obvious, of course, Specs was going to do more damage. That's not the point, darn it. But, now expecting him to go for Thunderbolt one more time. I'm going to go into Maturine here, who, shoutouts to Moogie, another one of my writers, for using this on me. Using 
the weakness policy alongside Sturdy uh, and Shell Smash is just a recipe for disaster. So I'm able to switch it in here, and I went for Aqua Jet thinking that it would kill the Porygon Z, because if he were Scarf, I, don't, I didn't know if I would outspeed him or not, but I don't kill him. That is a very strong Aqua Jet adamant nature, and it still doesn't kill the Porygon Z, so I was just really saddened to see that. Now here I was really expecting him to switch out, uh, so I, I didn't really know what to go for. I was expecting to switch out though, but just in case he didn't, I just decided to play it safe on that turn go for the Sucker Punch. I could have gone for Rock Tomb, which wouldn't have really helped since he decided to switch into Caesar. Uh, I do end up switching in for Rothorn. I was expecting a U-turn on his end, and I needed to get some entry hazards up. Now he has some Pokemon at low enough health, but if I can get some hazards up, I can take them out before they switch around too much. Now, I was expecting Thunderbolt from Porygon Z, but this is especially defensive for, uh, Fortress, so I knew I could take at least two, hopefully. Get up some entry hazards, uh, that way, if I'm able to force this thing out, then I will be able to kill it when it comes back in. Now, he decides to lock himself into Tri-Attack, which I thought was interesting. Uh, and unfortunately for me, his next Tri-Attack is actually going to get a critical hit, which is pretty important. Uh, I was going to put up another layer of spikes, or rather, the first layer of spikes. We'll see later, just be virtue of how much he's going to be switching around, that another layer of spikes would have been very very important so uh but that you know it doesn't matter for now though crit's a crit sometimes happens sometimes not but i'm just gonna bring in bandit talonflame now he doesn't really have anything that he can switch into this reliably and that's what talonflame does bets it's really just a good cleaner i really i see a lot of people um well not a lot of people i see some people lead with talonflame and i just don't like seeing talonflame in the early game uh it just People will do whatever they can to get the Stealth Rocks up, and if you kind of hold on to it till later, you will have at least two opportunities to bring it in, assuming you have the right HP number. Now, expecting a water move, I decided to go into Assault Vest Bis Sharp right here, and he actually does a really good amount of damage with that Sucker Punch. I was very impressed with that amount of damage. And he's able to take these Surfs relatively well. Thank goodness my opponent was running Scald, would have run the risk of getting burned. Of course, he also would have done less damage. But, that's okay. I, once again, was expecting him to switch out uh, after that first Sucker Punch just because it's obviously a 2-hit KO. He could have also stayed in and slacked off, and so I decided just to go for Rock Tomb there just in case he switched out, and he actually does end up switching out, so that works out as I'm able to pop Escadrill's Balloon, and I'm able to slow it down. Now that it was slower than Bishrop, I was thinking, okay, I should be able to take it out with a Brick Break it out, but unfortunately not, which means I lose my Bishrop which sucks. Now I have to figure out another way to deal with Slowbro. Just not, not very fun right there. I am able to bring back in Bandit Talonflame, and here begins the switching. Uh, as you can see, Slowbro has the ability Regenerator, which means, of course, you recover a certain amount of HP every time you switch your Pokemon out and back in. Uh, he's going to keep on switching Slowbro in and out with his other Pokemon, thereby death foddering them, and also uh, making my Talonflame take uh, recoil damage. Now, I end up taking out Excadrill if I had up the layer of spikes, it would have died to spikes. Um, Slowbro, of course, would have been recovering less HP if I had up a layer of spikes, and he would have been more in range for me to KO him with a Brave Bird. Uh, also, I would have taken a little bit less recoil damage from attacking Espeon there at full health if I had the entry hazards up. Once again, Slowbro comes back in, and if I had those entry hazards, I really think Slowbro would have been dead right there. Um, and now this is unfortunate because now it's down to my specs, uh, my specs Noivern to hit. And normally when it comes down to this, I always miss Draco Meteor. So I was thinking, let's go for Hurricane. I typically miss Draco Meteor. And all I needed to do was just have the specs Hurricane hit, really. Uh, unfortunately for me, I actually end up missing the specs Hurricane as well. When it comes down to those situations, I'm just not able to hit those inaccurate moves. Maybe should have been running Bloom Burst. But still, a, a fun battle overall. I, I feel like the hacks maybe swayed some things in there, but I really tried to play around it and I just wasn't able to. Um, and maybe the better move would have been to lock myself into Draco Meteor. But I have such bad luck with that move when it really matters that who knows? Either way, I enjoyed that battle, darn it. I hope you'll have a great weekend. Get, uh, get your teams prepared for the April Friendly here. I think I finally settled on my team. 
I'll be doing a team building video for them uh, tomorrow, hopefully if I get time, which is, I haven't really done a team building video in a while, but it should be interesting. So, y'all have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye now.